Everybody, welcome to the live stream on a Saturday. And uh, this is going to be an interesting one because it's always, um, I think it's always helpful to be retrospective and uh, take a look at what actually happened. And we're going to take a look at uh, FTX, what actually could have been, how they could have actually been solvent if they just would have done a couple of right things and uh, just go over exactly what happened as far as like balance sheets. Now, I will say this. This was a pretty good uh, piece uh, put up by The Block. And uh, what it talks about is that, you know, Sam and FTX could have actually made it all the way through if they just would have done the right things. And actually today they would be solvent and would actually be running right now. But I got to tell you, when this actually happened and this came down, we thought it was like the worst of the worst, right? But everything happens for a reason. It's at the right place at the right time. And then on top of that, uh, with what's going on here, is that you have to remember that if you just do the right things, it usually takes care of itself. And if you don't let greed get a hold of you, then you can have a monstrous business and do extremely well. But when greed when, when greed gets in the way, it screws up everything. So here's the piece. Bankman Freed's crypto portfolio will be up billions this year thanks to Solana. And I'll just preface it with this. What is owed to the creditors of FTX is roughly $8.7, $8.8 billion. If they just would have held on and not screwed up so bad, they would have actually $9 billion right now. And we would be talking about this uh, whatsoever. And uh, we would think that Sam Bankman Freed was still a genius of the 30 under 30 and that everything was on the up and up. But uh, again, everything happens for the reason. So just so you know, Sam right now is... Uh, went from rags to riches, and uh, he is in the Brooklyn Metropolitan Detention Center as he was found guilty of uh, fraud charges last month, which is the same jail that uh, R. Kelly, Fetty Wap, and uh, the subway attacker are sitting in right now. Amazing how everything kind of, you go from the top of the world, <laughs> and before you know it, uh, life stops you right in the face. So here's what we got. The price of Bitcoin has exploded about two weeks after SPF touched down in New York having been extradited from the Bahamas just before Christmas. Of course, that was a while ago. Bitcoin is now up about 160%, which is a pretty good. Bankman Freed faces uh, about 100 years in jail, but what if his risky bets actually paid off? So here's the numbers. What if he actually survived to see Bitcoin retake 44K? So just one day before FTX filed for bankruptcy protection, and about a week after a $5 billion bank run, and that's the key right there, the bank run. The bank run was the issue. And if it wasn't for some key players like Dirty Bubble Media and, uh, of course, CZ, uh, this never would have happened, I don't think. I think we, he could have just kept up with the lie. But uh, after this $5 billion bank run, everything collapsed and uh, Bank and Free mapped out the crypto exchange's balance sheets during that time. The sheet, which was dated November 10th, 2022, shows FTX assets, assets that at the time, whatever they are worth, we're now worth almost $9.6 billion at this point. So about two-thirds, $6.4 billion was able to be easily back-tested. Crypto made up uh, roughly $5 billion with an additional $630 million in stables. Serum, which I, I, I barely remember what this is. Serum made up around half of FTX's crypto. Half. Half. The token is tied to the centralized exchange on Solana, which Bankman Freed co-founded. He was big on Solana, and I guess he was big on, uh, on DEXs. And this did not pan out whatsoever because, and actually Solana collapsed, Serum collapsed, and now they're both making this miraculous uh, run back. Cash and stocks worth $827 million made up about 9% of the total sheet. FTX would be close to 40% up on its measurable portfolio, which would be now worth $9 billion, potentially up to $2.6 billion ahead. And that's what, this is where the thumbnail comes from. This is what it was worth back then. This is what it's worth today. Most of that is because why Solana? So, hey, uh, Sam was not a financial genius, uh, but he was a hell of a Ponzi player. And uh, he was right on Solana so far. I mean, Solana could be a very big play. Uh, but again, when greed gets in the way, all you have to do is just the right things. And he would have been he would have still had a very successful business. Now, this goes into account of you know, at that point, they stopped everything, which is they stopped co-mingling the funds. They stopped dipping into uh, all the funds that were given to them and actually spending them on lavishly on these different real estate assets and, uh, you know, buying things for themselves and getting to riskier and riskier plays. But let's be honest. If we take a look at the actual uh, spreadsheet with what they were doing for trading, they weren't their best traders at all either. So this all hinges on the fact that they just stopped everything and just took the path of least resistance and actually made it work. But again, um, once a fraudster, always a fraudster. And uh, this is what's uh, going to come back and bite them. So that's uh, what it is. 
And to continue on, uh, SBF sheet doesn't list token prices, only US dollar values, which makes it difficult to calculate the exact number. There's no guarantee this spreadsheet is completely or even totally correct, but the firm's grayscale Bitcoin holdings were later found to be much higher, which they're actually selling off right now. Still enough details line up with bankruptcy filings that we can roughly gauge the general health of FTX Treasury now and then, or then and now. If we take prices around those days and compare them to now, it's clear that Solana would have made the difference. That's all he had to do. I mean, again, and this goes to show you, you don't have to be right on every single thing that you pick. I personally have a lot of different cryptos. I don't really care if they all make it. They're not all going to make it. Most of them are going to bomb. It just has to happen that a couple of ones massively outperform. That's all I really care about. So thanks to a still a 400% recovery from 14 bucks to beyond $70 a day. Actually, I remember Solana being around $9, but okay. FTX's 982 million soul stake could be worth over $5 billion itself. Unfortunately, now FTX just has to sell everything. And one of those they talked about, Aptos, would have also helped with 312 million after its APT token more than doubled. FTX position would have climbed from 375 million to 900, 690 million as a result. Another 100 million came from gains in Robinhood stock. I think they would have done even better now that Robinhood is moving into EU with, uh, with uh, crypto trading. So they would have done actually pretty well. After Bankman Fried stepped down, FTX was taken over by uh, bankruptcy guru John Ray, who handled Enron. And the plan for FTX is to refund 90% of recovered assets to creditors, which they're, again, they're out. 8.7 billion owed in total. And that's what the prices were at that point. See, what would have been great is if these people got everything back in crypto, but that's not how it happens. They're going to get money back, which is a big problem. Well, it's a big issue, but that's exactly what uh, essentially is happening in all these different bankruptcy cases. So it's at the time things went bankrupt, not of how great it is right now. And then to finish up, FTX has now been cleared to sell billions of dollars in crypto alongside large sums in crypto stocks like Grayscale's Bitcoin and Ether Trust. So when we take a look at this, that last sentence probably would give people a little uh, anxiety, a little angina when they take a look at that, like, well, FTX is have to sell things off to pay off the creditor. That's going to be pretty awful, right? And of course, that was what will collapse everything. No, it's not what's going to happen. Actually, this was, they've been doing this since September 13th or actually September 20th or something like that. FTX got approval to sell crypto assets. They're allowed to repay customers in U.S. dollars. U.S. bankruptcy judge uh, John Dorsey approved the proposal at a court hearing in Delaware, allowing FTX to sell up to $100 million in crypto per week and enter into hedging and staking agreements that will allow FTX to minimize the risk of price volatility and earn passive income. So again, this has been going on since uh, third week of September. And uh, people are saying, well, Solana is going to collapse. I remember this. Solana is going to collapse because that is their biggest holding. And what did it do? It did the exact opposite. So every time you think you know exactly what's going to happen in the crypto market, it just uh, goes up and says, no, I'm going to do what I want to do. FTX said in a money court filing, it owns $3.4 billion in crypto, including $1.16 billion in Solana, $560 million in Bitcoin, and $192 million in Ether. Again, this is in September. Now it's all the way up to $9 billion. So again, just what we're done on the straight now, they would have been okay. So to take a look at this, to put this in perspective, this is Serum. This was the DEX that they were talking about. And... <laughs> Funny enough, it's up almost 50%. What is this? In 14 days, it's up 100%. That's pretty good. Seven days, it's up 87. And in 24 hours, it's up 50%. Good for that. I'm not going to touch it, but, uh, well, I, I can't, never say never. 30 days, it's up 148%. And it's looking pretty good. You're like, well, that's awesome, Rob. Well, just wait. Right now, the price is uh, 8 cents. Pretty good. Do you think, would you touch this? Would you buy this at eight cents? You might want to think about that because look at this. If I max out, you know how much this actually was at the top? 12 bucks. So if you're a gambler and you're like, hey, I like those odds, might be something for you to get into. Again, Solana Dex is, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of good ones. And uh, that's what we have for Serum. That's exactly what it is. And then uh, I want to just say one thing, which is, I know people like when the FTX collapsed, they thought it was like the worst thing of all time and it was going to take everything down and it really didn't. As much problems as we had, it didn't really, well, actually, no, I can't say that. That actually, <laughs> excuse me, it actually was pretty bad. And the next one, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. The next one was Binance. Everybody thought that was going to collapse the market again and it didn't. So FTX did and I'm glad it did. And I'm glad that it actually happened because if it didn't happen, this next bull run, which we're going to see, it's going to be, I think it's going to be very big. 
I could be wrong. I've been wrong many times before, but you have to get away all this cancer and all this sickness so you can be healthy enough to really rally to where you're supposed to go. I always thought the last bull run was a little bit off, a little bit funny. There was something that was going on in the background. Now we know what it was. It was the FTXs, it was the Voyagers, it was the Celsius, it was the Three Arrows Capital, all those things that were happening, the SBFs that were going on behind the scenes. And now that we don't have that as much, I think we're actually have a, a, a clearer path to actually do these things. And I have to give credit where credit's due. If it wasn't for Dirty Bubble Media and this guy, CZ Binance, and some people say, well, he's an opportunist because you know he sunk SPF and he screwed us in, in the whole market. No, he didn't. He purged the cancer or the sickness that was Sam and his groups of FTX. I don't even remember this tweet. This is November 6, 2022. He says, as part of Binance's exit from FTX equity last year, Binance roughly received roughly $2.1 billion in cash. Due to recent revelations that have come to light, we have decided to liquidate any remaining FTT on our books. Then he went into a reasoning why, and he wished everybody the best. But this right here was the beginning of the end because that's when everybody knew, hey, things are insolvent, something's going on, we're under the bank, $5 billion down, and now here we are today. I actually thought it was awful. Now I think it's great. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then just to continue on with that theme, uh, Solana, of course, everybody knows that Solana is uh, up uh, quite tremendously. Uh, and then also uh, NFTs overtake Ethereum and Bonk is up 26%. I like Bonk. I'm going to tell you why. So there's a great site we've been taking a look at, CryptoSlam.io. And yes, now Solana is above Bitcoin and Ethereum for NFTs. And what's interesting enough about this is that you see that wash percentage? That's when you just have like the same person or two people working in, in cahoots are essentially, you know, moving things back and forth and uh, trying to make up fake volume. Look at Ethereum. Wash percentage is 40, almost 45 percent, almost half. Polygon's no better. 39 percent. They're the worst of the worst. And uh, Solana is only 1.6 percent. So all of those sales, uh, that's pretty much real volume. So congratulations to them. And then uh, taking a look at Bonk. Bonk is Bonk is the Dogecoin of Solana. That's that's how I explain it. And I said, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I said it was like 150, 170. I go, this will be a top 100 easy. And now it's the number 81. I think it's a top 50 easy. And uh, just take a look at these these crazy prices, right? And it's not like you're missing a ton. Yes, it's up 600% in 30 days. But again, just like we took a look at Serum and a lot of other things that happened and popped off in 2019 and 20, it could be just the beginning. Here's my example. This is the DCA simulation. Now I want to just take you through this. But I put the asset, the primary asset, as not Bitcoin. I put it as Dogecoin. Let's just say you put 10 bucks in a day back when no one really, no one really cared about it, right? I mean, it made a pump a little bit in 2019, but because it's been around. You know, this is last week was uh, actually this week, it was Dogecoin's 10th anniversary. You know how long it's been around? So think about, you know, your crypto that's been around. Uh, how long has your crypto been around and how long has it been in the top 40 uh, like Dogecoin has for almost its entire existence it's been in the top 40, if not the top 20? But anyhow, so you put Dogecoin 10 bucks a day. You started, let's say, 2019, December 11th, right? So over here, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. So you're underwater because it doesn't do anything. <laughs> it doesn't really do too much, right? But then when the, and this is, you know, just before the bull run. Now we go into uh, May or so. Look at this. You're still only up 15% after roughly six months of of uh, invest, investing 10 bucks a day. You invested 1,600 bucks and you're up a whopping uh, $200. No one cares about that. But look at this. When things go parabolic, man, they go parabolic. And actually Doge at its, at its height on May you would have invested $5,000 and you would have got back 1.5, 1, 1,054,000 1, from an investment of 5,000. I'm not saying it's going to duplicate that. I'm just saying Bonk is the, Bonk is the Dodge, the, the, the Doge coin of Solana. And does Rob own a lot of Bonk? Yes, Rob does. And uh, is Rob biased? Absolutely Rob is biased. But there's a reason why I bought it. I think it's going to do pretty well. Then actually, if you go down here, this is what's, what's great about it. Look at the asset price of Doge. It was so, it was fractions of a penny. You couldn't even see it. Asset price. You invested $10. And watch this. Just keep going. Yeah, still fractions of a penny. Fractions of a penny. Fraction. Look at this. 
Fractions of a penny. Jesus, how many Christmas does ever go up? Look at this. Every, ah, hit a penny. When was this? January 2nd, 2021. It hit a penny. And then it just went, yeah, it didn't go that crazy. Well, it did. And of course, April and so on and so forth. So again, I'm not telling you to buy bonk. I'm just saying, if you're a gambler, might be something to look at too. And then lastly, two stories to go. One is uh, congratulations to Chainlink. Also another crypto that I own because I'm biased. Uh, Chainlink staking program. I didn't see this coming. It quickly pulls in $600 million and it hit a limit in less than like an hour. So the staking program expanded the capacity of 45 million link tokens from 25 and the portion reserved for the community quickly filled up. How fast? Well, the version two community staking mechanism opened for early access from 12 p.m. Eastern time. And within 30 minutes, you had 32.8 million link had been staked. 30 minutes. Six hours later, they hit the capacity of like 41 million link. So again, congratulations to link. I think it's uh, still gonna go really high and we'll see how it goes. They have a good competitor though. Uh, Pith or Pyth or whatever you want to call it, which is the uh, Solana Oracle. Again, both could do well, and I invested into both. And then lastly, I know everybody was excited about this, so uh, let me be a wet blanket and tell you you're going to owe some taxes. On this show, it's great to be bullish, and that's fantastic, right? You know, but let's temper some expectations and bring things down a little bit. It's not all going to the moon, everything else. There's some real world ramifications, and one of those is taxes. And this is real. Now, I don't know where you're at. I'm in the States, Puerto Rico specifically. So I don't know what it means for you for taxes personally. But if you're in the States, this is what it means. And again, a lot of tax codes, it's not like the governments don't want to tax you. So just be aware of this. So claimed your JTO, time to report to the IRS. Uh, there was a, that was the uh, GITO airdrop yesterday which uh, that was the uh, Solana uh, liquid staking platform, which we uh, talked about. Actually, it's over here. Gito staking. Yeah, that's the one. And they did. They had an airdrop. And uh, sorry, Charlie, you're, if you did missed it, you missed it. I'm not going to have another one. But if you watched yesterday's video, uh, I give you like five or seven different uh, new projects on Solana where they potentially will have some airdrops coming up. So get into that. Here's what happens. So... The airdrop comes, you get some, some JTO governance tokens. Everybody's happy, especially the IRS. And this is the rules. This is from Gabriel Brin, Vice President of Tax and Accounting Products at Legible. So it's not like he's, he's very specific oriented with crypto and digital assets. The IRS has been very clear in numerous documentation that digital assets received via an airdrop are to be recognized as ordinary income once received. So if you've got the airdrop, that's what you're gonna be taxed on. This means anyone who received any assets via airdrop must report as income based on the assets value when received on their tax, return, tax returns for that year. And this is this is the really crappy part. Even if the assets are never converted to USD or fiat currency, that's a, that's a bummer. So you're sitting there on unrealized gains, essentially, and they're like, hey, you owe some money, which I think is totally wrong. That, that it, it shouldn't be like that. That'd be like going, okay, well, if you're going to tax me on unrealized gains, then I'm going to take a tax, a tax deduction for these unrealized losses because guess how much actually came down? Oh, and also the fact that uh, I lost a ton of money in Voyager and Celsius and FTX you know, ran off. I don't want to get that. So if you're going to say unrealized gains, give me the unrealized losses. The IRS is not fair. Let's just uh, call it what it is, but there's some hope. do 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 now, the income tax collected on the initial airdrop will follow the holder's typical tax bracket based on income. And the top, then here's an example. The top two wallets that claim the most JTO, uh, each collected tokens worth around half a million dollars or $480,000. If these holders are single filers in the US, making less than 578,000 in income, that airdrop alone bumps them into a higher federal tax bracket. <laughs> That sucks. So if you're making like 75,000, 80,000, you get this airdrop, you're really happy, right? But then you get taxed a little bit more. Now, some people would say, who cares? I got half a million dollars and you'd be right. But some people, most people, almost everybody hates paying taxes, let's be honest. 
Any assets received via airdrop that are later sold or traded for a profit would then be taxed based on standard capital gains tax. Again, if this is short-term or long-term, the holding period, which would determine whether long-term gains will be taxed, begins at the time of the airdrop. But again, if you got it and you hold it, they say that's where you're going to actually get taxed, and that's a real big problem. Here's the thingy. I'm not a tax expert, as you may have probably have deduced so far. So what I do is I like to make things very simple and I use Coin Ledger. I've used them for two straight years. It's been very a seamless process. Also, what's great is they just released as a beta test, a portfolio tracker, a free portfolio tracker that you can use to see your cost basis when you're in profit, when you're not in profit, what your capital gains will be, what they won't be, will and won't. And it's 100% free. Now this right here, the, what's great about this, the Coin Ledger platform is what I use for my taxes. So it's gonna be seamless. I'm gonna have my cost basis right there. I'm gonna have a portfolio. I'm gonna take a look at it and go, oh, look, I'm up 10% on tomato coin today. Maybe I should sell 10% of that. How much would that be? Oh, I thought how much it would be. Okay, I'll do that. And I can see how much it'll be. Now, it'll tell me if you sell this, it'll be low, it'll be long-term or short of gallery. Again, free, so it's be great. Fantastic. But the beauty of this whole platform is this. If you're unfamiliar with things that are going on and you're like, you know what, Rob, I got like 200, 300, 400 different transactions and I don't really understand, you know, what should I be paying? And I want to get, I don't want to be put in jail, like tax evasion, like Al Capone. <laughs> On the very bottom, it says find a crypto tax expert. And they got a bunch of CPAs that you can talk to and you can bounce some things off them. Uh, the actual platform actually syncs up with uh, with their uh, computers, and they can you know they can send it over. They can take a look at it and say, oh, just do this or this, or maybe not do this. And you know that's why CPAs are there to save you a boatload of money. So as tax season comes up, it's important. It would behoove you probably to take a look at this because I talk about tax a lot because they scare the hell out of me, and I just want to be up on the up and up because I've been on the other side of that, and it's never fun. So I'm just trying to help everybody out. And then uh, also, I want to say thanks to uh, the sponsor of the show, I Trust Capital. And uh, as you may know, some of these capital gains, if you're using a Roth IRA like I do, I've used these for like the last two years, uh, there is no capital gains on your Roth IRA. Now, you got to wait until you're a certain age, 59 and a half years old, which for me isn't too far away, got to be honest with you. But at that point, I paid this much in taxes, zero. It's the same thing Peter Thiel did. When he got his PayPal stocks, he put it in a Roth IRA. He's 59 or something like that. I think he's like 59 right now. If not, he's very close. And guess how much he's paying on those billions of dollars of taxes? Zero. Because he did a, a backdoor Roth IRA. And uh, good for him. Not jealous or anything. So this is something you can do. Also, what's great about this is you can trade within your this Roth IRA and you, you don't incur any penalties. And then lastly, before we go into the q and I just want to make mention of this. People say, but Rob, you're always preaching your rules which is no exchanges, which is right there on your rules, number three, 0% exchanges. Why are you telling me to do this? I'm not telling you to do anything, first of all. I'm telling you this is what I do. But I will just say this. You can't hold your crypto, self-custody it, and put it in a Roth IRA. You can try it. There's been numerous cases, like the Fairview case, or excuse me, the McNulty versus Commissioner case, where they did the exact same thing under an LLC, under their gold, which is a commodity, which is what I believe that uh, Bitcoin will actually be uh, classified at some point. He held this for decades of his gold. And when he went to sell his gold and to get it tax free, they said, no, you can't do that. You're still going to pay the same long term capital gains tax, which is 20 percent plus whatever state that you're in. So because you self custody and it's the same thing over at Swan Bitcoin as well. And I've talked to a couple of different lawyers about this and the same thing. So yes, that's how it is. But that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Maybe talk about is time sensitive now.